The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here back again, bringing you guys another 2017 team schedule preview. The video today is going to be on the Atlanta Falcons. We're going to take a look at every game on their regular season schedule today and predict a win or a loss for them or a tie potentially. Not predicting any ties. I'm going to give you the I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak preview. There's no ties in this entire series. So, if you guys are enjoying these videos, make sure that you drop a like on them, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and make sure to comment below if you agree with me or disagree with me on some of these games. I know some people have been disagreeing with me. Mostly it's always people who are fans of certain teams, and then they disagree with me about that team. So try to be a little bit unbiased and give me some actual information about why you might disagree with me or agree with me. So let me know in the comment section below about that, guys. So with that said, let's hop into the first scheduled game on the 2017 schedule for the Atlanta Falcons, and that is going to be obviously in week one against the Chicago Bears. Now, people always talk about a Super Bowl hangover, especially for the teams that lose the Super Bowl, but I think this one should be pretty easy for the Falcons. I think they're going to be able to avoid that Super Bowl hangover. Now, Chicago does have a decent run game themselves, a pretty good offensive line. They have lost a couple of pieces, but overall, they're still probably going to be a decent running game. So that gives them, in my opinion, a little bit of a chance in this one in Chicago, but the weather isn't going to be quite bad at this point in the season, or it shouldn't be anyway. It shouldn't be too cold, and they're pretty terrible other than that, to be honest with you. I mean, defensively, Chicago is awful right now. They're passing games in shambles. They really have no one to throw the ball to. I think Atlanta wins this one relatively easily to move to 1-0 on the season. Now, in week two, we have an interesting game, a rematch of the 2016 NFL or NFC Championship. Technically, I guess it was played in 2017, if I remember correctly, but it was for last season is the point. And Atlanta won that one 44 to 21 in pretty dominant fashion. This one, again, is going to be played in Atlanta. Now, the Packers do have the offensive firepower to keep up, but I just think Atlanta's defense is vastly superior. I mean, especially their pass rush. They gave Green Bay quite a few problems last year. Aaron Rodgers just wasn't himself in that one, and they really weren't able to run the ball. Honestly, Green Bay didn't do much to address the ability to run the ball this offseason. They drafted a couple rookie running backs, but it seems like they're still going to go with Ty Montgomery. So to me, I think this is going to be an Atlanta victory. It's at home for the Falcons. I think they've got this one, but that should be a fun one to watch early in the season. It should give us a pretty good preview for what we're going to have down the stretch. If either of these teams blows the other one out, we might be looking at the NFC Championship right then and there. Now in week three, the Falcons head on the road again to play the Detroit Lions. This is a team that narrowly made the playoffs in 2016. And Detroit did re-sign Matt Stafford this offseason, but they really haven't made many upgrades, especially on offense this offseason. They did change kind of the way that they've been operating on offense over the past couple of seasons. It's almost become more of like a West Coast type of style. Short passes, a lot of yards after the catch. They've even been utilizing their running backs, especially in the, the passing game. Guys like Theo Riddick, Drake Bell prior to that. And I think even Amir Abdullah this year should be utilized quite a bit in the passing game. So that kind of negates some of the things that some teams like to do as far as you know getting after the quarterback and things like that. But at the same time, I just think the Falcons' defense is quick enough, and they should be able to negate some of those short passing plays that the, the Lions like to run. And obviously, Atlanta has themselves one of the most high-powered offenses in the entire NFL, and they should be able to beat up on that Detroit Lions defense that allowed 33 passing touchdowns against them in 2016. That was the second most in the NFL. So I'm going to go ahead and predict that Atlanta gets the victory in this one as well to move to 3-0. and now, in week four, they're back at home against the Buffalo Bills, and on paper, you could maybe say that this one should be a blowout, but at the same time, I just don't think Buffalo is a team that gives up many blowout victories this season. I think that they're going to be a decent enough team that they should be able to not get embarrassed in many of these games, but at the same time, this is a home game against a mediocre offense, and it just seems like a win for the Falcons. I mean, the, the Bills gave up the fourth most rushing yards in the league in 2016, so Devonta Freeman and Tevin Coleman could have a field, ga field day in this one. It might not be the biggest day for Matt Ryan in the passing game, but still, I think that the Falcons are going to walk away with a 
an 0 record after their first four games of the season. That leads into week five. Obviously, they've got their bye there. And in week six, they're going to be up against the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins are a team that also narrowly made the playoffs this past year. And it just didn't really feel like they were a playoff team, in my opinion. Yeah, they made it, but it was really in kind of weird circumstances. So they're going to be up against another borderline playoff team. And they're going to be at home again. So I, I will say that the Falcons may have a little bit of trouble again up against one of the better pass rushers in the league, and that's Cameron Wake. They've also got Ndamukong Sue on the defensive line. But their offense might just be in complete turmoil by the time that this game happens, to be honest. I mean, they've got Jay Cutler at quarterback. If he's still out there in week six, which is very possible, this looks like one of those games on paper that could just be really, really bad. One of those terrible Jay Cutler games. The Falcons force a lot of turnovers, and they can pressure the quarterback as well as almost any team in the league. So, I mean, to be honest with you, I think that this could be a pretty big victory for the Falcons in this game against what most people would consider to be a pretty good Miami Dolphins team. And in week seven, we have the biggest game on the entire NFL schedule this season, at least heading into the season. And that is the Super Bowl rematch from a year ago. We have the Atlanta Falcons heading to New England to play the Patriots. I expect that we'll have two undefeated teams heading into this game. So Atlanta's going to be looking for that payback. They're going to be looking to get back at Tom Brady and the Patriots after blowing that huge lead in the Super Bowl. The Falcons just, it, it that's got to be heartbreaking for them, man. And while that game was played on a neutral field, this one is actually going to be played in Foxborough. So the Patriots will be having a little bit of an advantage there. They will, however, be without Julian Edelman, who made that historic catch in the big game. They will, though, have two additions that they didn't have a season ago. They're going to have Brandon Cooks, who is obviously new to the roster. They'll also potentially, well, hopefully, have a healthy Rob Gronkowski by that point. So it's going to be interesting to see how this happens, but the Patriots have one of the strongest home field advantages in the league. And while Atlanta certainly has the capability of winning this one, I do have to go with the Patriots here. I just think that they've got what it takes to win this one. Now in Week 8... The Falcons will head on the road to face the Jets. So that's two straight games against AFC East opponents on the road, which is a little bit difficult. But after a tough stretch of playing four straight playoff teams from 2016 in their previous five games, the Falcons will get a little bit of a break here. They'll match up against an awful Jets team that simply looks outmatched in just about every aspect. I think we can all agree this is probably going to be an Atlanta win. Now heading into week nine, the Falcons will already be at six and one, pretty well in control of their division, potentially at least. They have some tough division games down the stretch here, and it starts off in Carolina. But thankfully, if you're a Falcons fan, this is a team that the Atlanta Falcons have defeated in three straight contests. However, Cam Newton and the Panthers are certainly going to be looking for revenge in this one. Road division games are always tough in the NFL, so I think this could potentially be a trap game for the Falcons. They need to pay attention. They need to not take them lightly. Even if Carolina is not looking good early in the season, they still have the ability to beat Atlanta. We've seen it before. And in the end, I am going to go with the Falcons in this one. I just think they're a much better overall roster right now than the Panthers, especially after losing Josh Norman two years ago. I mean, that led the way for Julio Jones to have an absolutely ridiculous game. I mean, he abused the Panthers the first time these two teams played in 2016. He had 12 receptions for an absolutely insane 300 yards receiving in one game. The Falcons just don't have anyone that can match up with Julio. I mean, that's just a fact at this point. So if the Falcons go out there and they have the game plan of getting the ball to Julio Jones, I think they're going to have a lot of success in this one, to be honest with you. So uh, again, I do think that Atlanta is going to win this one. If the Panthers do go out there and they have the game plan of taking away Julio, we've actually seen that lead to some huge running lanes, and we saw that in the second game that these teams played. So I just don't think Carolina has a whole lot that they can do to stop Atlanta right now, and I honestly have to go with the Falcons fairly easily in this game. But again, it could be a trap game. Hopefully that, that um, the Falcons take them seriously. So in week 10, then, the Cowboys on the schedule. Thankfully for the Falcons, this one's going to be at home. But Ezekiel Elliott should be back at this point. So the Cowboys offense is going to be operating at full capacity. And offensively, the Cowboys can definitely match fire with fire against the Falcons. 
The difference, however, is the defense. The Cowboys will almost certainly have to do an amazing job of controlling the clock in this game. Their secondary simply cannot match Atlanta's passing game. The Cowboys' run defense actually quietly held opposing offenses in 2016 to the fewest rushing yards in the league, but... I just don't think that the Falcons are going to go out there and run the ball that much. They don't need to. They're just going to do what they're best at, and that's passing the ball. So if the Cowboys do win this one, I think it's going to be an ugly one where they just have a huge advantage in time of possession. But I don't see that happening. I think Atlanta's passing game is going to be too much, and they'll get enough pressure on Dak Prescott to force some three and outs, and that should be enough for them to get the win in this one at home. So that sets up a big game in Seattle in Week 11. These two teams matched up in the 2016 regular season, and the Seahawks narrowly won that one by two points. And a lot of it honestly came down to the ending of the game where Richard Sherman had that crazy holding penalty that just wasn't called for some reason on Julio Jones. Sherman's still a great cornerback, but I think Julio Jones is going to get the better of him this time, and the Falcons are going to win a close one here in Seattle on the road in, in there against the 12th man, that, that's going to be a difficult one, but I think that they've got what it takes to make it happen. So that leads us to a Week 12 divisional game against the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay, definitely a team that's on the rise. They've got a lot of young talent, and the Falcons are going to have their work cut out for them against a team that has beaten them in Atlanta two years in a row. So that means... They haven't been able to defend their home field advantage against a division rival. That's a difficult thing to overcome. But I do expect the NFC South to be one of the better divisions in the league, and I really wouldn't be surprised if any of these teams got a win against one another. Still, I do have Atlanta winning this game. I think that they're going to be on such a hot streak. I mean, look at those wins against difficult-to-win to games, honestly. I mean, look at all of them in a row there. Carolina, Dallas, Seattle, I mean, three big wins in a row, and obviously against the Jets as well. I think they're going to have enough momentum built up to be able to get the win here against Tampa Bay at home. So that means in week 13, we're going to have them host the Minnesota Vikings this time. And uh, the Vikings are a team that does have a good defense. So I think that's going to be the story here. It's going to be Atlanta's offense against the Vikings defense. But I think the real differentiator might be actually Atlanta's defensive line against Minnesota's offensive line. The Vikings had one of the worst offensive lines in the entire league in 2016. They did try to make some improvements, but it just seems doubtful to me that they'll be able to be suddenly good enough to control the pace of this game. Minnesota is going to be able to, to or they're going to need to be extremely methodical. They can't mess up. And if they do, this game could get completely out of reach for them. Pretty similar to what we see with the Cowboys, although, you know, a little bit different. Vikings are going to try and win it with defense. Dallas probably going to try and win with running the ball. In the end, though, I do think that Atlanta is going to get the victory against both of those teams. They're just a better balanced team, I think, than either the Cowboys or the Vikings at this time. This is going to be a hugely important game, though, potentially for the Vikings, who could be on the verge of playoff contention. So don't count them out in this one, even if on paper you look at it and you say, Sam Bradford, Matt Ryan, yeah, give me Matt Ryan. Of course, again, I am going to go with the Falcons, but uh, again, I don't think this is necessarily going to be as easy as it looks on paper. We could see Atlanta potentially wrap up the NFC South here, depending how it goes, but I still think that they've got, they've probably got to get at least one or two more wins to actually do that. So in week 14, they have the opportunity to do that against the New Orleans Saints again at home. Two of the NFL's best offenses here. In fact, we could be talking about the NFL's two best offenses. They're going to be playing in the Georgia Dome. This could be an absolute track meet. So make sure you get all of your fantasy players in there in this one. Obviously, Atlanta, New Orleans, they've been two high-scoring teams over the past few years against one another. They've actually averaged a combined 58 and a half points per game against one another in their past six games. So that's a hell of a lot of points. That's almost 30 points per game for each team. That's crazy, dude. So I don't expect this to be a whole lot different. Maybe not 30 points per game, but I mean, 30 points per team in this one. But we're still probably talking about a ton of fantasy points scored. So make sure you get those guys in there. Again, I expect this to be a shootout. Atlanta slightly edging them out in the end. But I do think that this is going to be a pretty good entertaining game. Now, in week 15, we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the schedule again. They played them three weeks prior to this at home. This time, they're obviously going to be on the road against the Buccaneers. And at 12-1, and it'd be tough for me to not predict that the Falcons beat the Buccaneers. But that's actually exactly what I'm going to do. I think Tampa Bay could be battling for their playoff hopes at this point. And with the Falcons probably having already locked up the division, if not a first-round bye at this point, we could see a little bit of a letdown here. They might be letting their foot off the gas pedal just a little bit 
on the road against a division rival. Tampa wins this one in what could be another wild high-scoring game. I think Tampa's got what it takes to get the W, though, at home. Now, in Week 16, the Falcons do go on the road again to play the Saints. Obviously, two times in three weeks to play a division rival. That's always very, very difficult. It almost always leads to a closer game than the first one. So I think that you're going to see that here. I do think that both teams are still going to put up plenty of points. But we've seen that in the past between these two teams, the second game that they play tends to be a little bit lower scoring. And perhaps that's because the defenses get some film and are able to make some adjustments to at least slow down those opposing offenses. But I think this is still going to be an incredibly exciting game for those of us who love offensive football, tons of fantasy points, things like that. But Atlanta's going to be looking to get back in the win column. Unfortunately, like I said before, the NFC South is just, in in my opinion, one of those divisions this year where any team could beat the other one, whether at home or on the road. And I especially see that happening here when Atlanta heads to New Orleans. New Orleans is a way better team at home than they are on the road. So I am going to give this one to New Orleans, and they split the series for the season against the Falcons. And that could be a big game for New Orleans if they try to keep their playoff hopes alive as well. Now, in week 17, after dropping two straight games to division rivals, the media is going to start talking about how Atlanta just isn't as good as they were in 2016, and maybe they're just falling apart here down the stretch with two straight losses. But I think Atlanta is going to start to answer those criticisms pretty soundly in week 17 as they lock up the NFC South again, if they haven't already done that, and get a first round bye as well, maybe even locking up the one seed in the NFC, depending on how things go, with a pretty thorough beatdown of the Panthers, who I think will probably be out of playoff contention at this point. I think Atlanta is going to reassert themselves as one of the favorites to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl this season. And yeah, they're going to finish this season at 13 and three, a very nice record for the Falcons. So there you go. Uh, Final analysis for the Falcons, I think Julio Jones and Matt Ryan, if they can stay healthy, there's really not a whole lot of reason to believe that this will not, again, be one of the NFL's best offenses overall. And while the Falcons do have some defensive deficiencies, they've been able to overcome some seriously bad defenses in the past and still been a pretty decent team. Kyle Shanahan is gone, obviously, and that's going to lead to some potential questions regarding Matt Ryan's ability to succeed without him. And while I don't see him repeating the efficiency numbers that he had a season ago, probably not necessarily going to be an MVP candidate. I do think that he is going to be able to pass the ball and get a ton of yardage, a ton of touchdowns. And we could be talking about him being one of the better quarterbacks again for fantasy football this season. Overall, I think that the Falcons are going to be one of the better teams in the league this year, and I think they'll honestly have a chance to compete for their first Super Bowl and and potentially get it this season. So that is going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please be sure to drop a like on it and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Make sure you leave your comments as well below on if you agree with me or disagree with me. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.